Hi, it's Andy again, and this is the first video in a series of videos that I'm going to do on uh, Parse.com. Now, Parse.com is a application backend. Uh, this allows you to send push notifications, uh, save objects in the cloud, um, and then eventually what I'm going to show you how to do, hopefully, is how to publish those um, objects to possibly like Facebook or Google Plus or something like that. Um, one of the most basic features that people want to use parse.com is for push notifications. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do real uh, today. It's super simple. Um, first thing you're going to need to do is uh, go to parse.com, set up an account, uh, create a sample app or your app that you want to make or one that you've already created, um, download the SDK, and extract the, the zip file. Um, inside that uh, zip file you'll have this the parse uh, jar file which you can add to Android Studio very easily. A lot easier than the Facebook SDK um, as you probably if you've seen my previous video there, there's quite a few hoops you have to go to to, to add the, the Facebook SDK to Android Studio. Um, Another option would be to actually create your own Facebook jar file, but uh, I won't go into that uh, since this tutorial has nothing to do with Facebook right now. Um, first thing you're going to do is take this jar folder, put it in your libs um, folder, uh, right click, and then um, you'll have an option here, add as library. And what that does, it automatically go, edits the, your build.gradle file to add this right here. So it adds the libs and um, the parse jar file as a, as a dependency or library. Um, so once you have that done, there's actually very little you need to do to set up uh, the, the push notifications. Um, one thing you're going to need to do is get an app ID and your uh, client ID from parse. I'm not showing you here. What I did is I created it. Um, I copied the, the values down and I put it into um, my value strings and um, I created you know string pairs for it so uh, I don't want to show you because it'll use up my um, if you try this application and, and use it it'll, it'll use up my notifications that I'm allowed to send and I need to save them for an app that I'm actually making um, so they, they're pretty generous with a free account so take a look into that you can send quite a bit of push notifications for free um, so this is why you might want to do this for your app and another reason is that it actually uses Google Cloud um, messaging by default so most of your um, Android devices with the exception of ones that don't support Google Cloud Messaging. Uh, some of the examples that they listed were like the Kindle Fire or something like that. It does use a backup um, messaging service in case uh, your, your app is installed on a device that doesn't support it, but it does use the Google Cloud Messaging by default. So um, what I'm doing here is I created an application um, class. So uh, you don't have to do anything to your main activity. Uh, this is actually the default main activity that you create when you create a new project. There's nothing there. As you can see, it's just a hello world. Um, what we do want to do is actually set up that um, main activity uh, here. So parse, we want to initialize it. So we initialize parse by uh, getting the context, which would be this in the application. Remember, this is an application, not an activity. Um, you need to get your app, app, application ID and your application or, or your client ID. Uh, you can hard code these in if you want, no big deal. Uh, just put them in, you know, quotation marks so that it knows it's a string and uh, you're good to go. Next thing we want to do is set up the push service to set the default push callback, um, which is the main activity. Now, what this does is that when our application notification shows up here, we're going to, um, when we select it, it's going to load up our main activity or whatever activity you have in your app that you want to launch by default. Um, I believe you can change that. 
uh, for different messages you send. I'm not really quite sure. I've, I just started playing with Parse and uh, getting down to the nitty gritty. Um, so that's all you need to do to set up Parse uh, push notification on as far as Java side. As you can see, it's very simple, just two lines of code. Now you need to go into and your Android manifest um, file and add a, quite a few per permissions and uh, change some things. First of all, that application, um, parse push application in this case, that we are uh, setting up, we need to uh, specify that here. Otherwise, it doesn't get called. So you just say Android name and then give it your um, the application name. And then uh, the next thing we want to do is add some permissions. So if you go to the tutorial, these you can just copy and paste these. Um, but these are the ones that you're going to need. And then uh, we need to create our own uh, permission, which is uh, is going to be the 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 message permission. And then we need to call it here. So. Uh, your application will have its own. Um, you'll just change this part to be whatever the namespace is for your application that you're developing and uh, copy that same thing down here. Uh, next thing we need to do is set up uh, receivers and um, and services. So we have a service that we're calling. It's going to be the push service. That's the one that we use uh, here. So you just need to specify it. And then um, we're going to have two receivers. Uh, reason for this is one of them is the Google Cloud messaging receiver, and the other one is if uh, you're installing this on a device that doesn't have Google Cloud messaging. So if you're, if you're just going to target devices that have Google Cloud messaging, you can pretty much uh, skip this part. But to be you know well-rounded and you know support most devices, it's really not that much more uh, to just add you know another receiver in there so uh, another thing you're gonna need to change is in the category for the Google Cloud messaging you have to specify um, your namespace here so don't forget to change that if you're following the the tutorial on uh, parse.com for the for sending push notifications. Once you have your app set up and as it's running here, uh, right here, then you're gonna, to send a push notification, you can just go to parse.com. Uh, we're gonna load up your app right here. Make sure you have the, the one that you want to send the messages to because it'll send it to whatever message, for to whatever apps you have. So if you have multiple apps, make sure you select the right one. Um, push notifications here. Oh, and when you're setting up your um, application, if you go into settings, you can actually find your um, ID and client ID right in here. I don't want to, again, use up mine, so um, I'm not going to click on it right now, but that this is where it's stored. So then we're going to send a push notification, and it'll be a pretty simple one. Um, as you can see, only Android clients are, are is only it's the only thing there right now. Uh, it knows that there's one recipient because I'm routing it in um, right here right now. So since I've already started the application and running it, Parse already knows I have one person to send a uh, notification to. So we'll send this as a uh, hello Parse user. How are you doing today? Okay, and we want to send it now. Uh, we do want. I'm gonna specify um, an expiration. Uh, let's go five minutes from now, um, and send a notification. And you hear it. Your push notification has been created, and boom, it's right here in the notification window. Hello, Parse user. How are you doing today? So when we select this, it's actually going to launch the main activity, which you can see is already up. There you go. As you can see, it launched the, the main activity or whatever activity you want. Um, and you can probably bundle information and stuff like that into there. All right. So hope you enjoy this tutorial. This is the first of the Parse tutorials. So have a good day.